the best one coat paint solution in the gaming industry just got bigger. Since their release, hobbyists have been begging for more. And after extensive development with feedback from customers, we did just that. Speedpaint has grown to include 90 colors in total, including 10 of the industry's first one coat metallics. With boxed options to suit every budget, whether you're just getting started or if you must have the most wanted speed paint colors. Soon you'll be able to sample or replenish your speed paints when our beautiful and comprehensive display hits your friendly local game store. Including all 90 colors and a highly requested larger 100 milliliter bottle of speed paint medium. Find speed paint in stores this summer or pre order today at www.thearmypainter.com. Hi everyone, my name is Mike. I am the CEO here at Dogmite and we are super pumped to bring you the D20 Tribute screen here on Backerkit. We've successfully crowdfunded 25 projects and have been making TTRPG gear for a decade. We are a small, dedicated team of craftspeople that make everything on site here in Michigan. If this is your first time hearing about us, check out dogmite.com to get a feel for what we do. Thank you for taking a moment to check out the video. The D20 screen is an amazing piece of gear and we are so excited to partner with Backerkit to bring the project to life. We look forward to connecting with the community and getting your feedback on the project. Thank you for your support. It means the world to us. Hello, we're back. Welcome to Band of Badgers. This is the Great British Brush Off. Uh, and with us is, we've got Steve. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. Thank you very much. I'm watching yeah. myself on Twitter and getting distracted. Not Twitter, uh, I, wonder Twitch. What, I wonder what's going on. <laughs> yeah, we've got bits and pieces. Right, um, I'll pause that now. And we're live, by the way. Cool. I was just waiting for the uh, the phone to uh, to catch up here. I've got my camera here, as you see. I've got a big black window. But we're joined by JD Wiker. <laughs> <laughs> Which apparently I've been saying wrong for donkey's <laughs> years, but hey, <laughs> sorry about that. But we got it. We got it. We get there in the end. That's that's the point. Beginners get there in the end. That's what we like. Um, but how you doing, JD? All good? I'm doing well, thank you. Cool. Now the challenge today is uh, well, I've got to work the camera because it's for some reason not working. So Steve, um, yes. the challenge today is D20 
this. This is the Frameworks Balor by WizKids. This is absolutely phenomenal. Now, if while you're watching this, you're watching this uh, online, which would be great, do check out um, our Instagram page. So the Instagram page will have photos. Uh, I'll put up the link, there you go. Uh, we'll have photos of me putting this together. I've kind of stuck some of it together and I've done a base paint on the wings, which I'm quite happy with. Steve's done some bits and pieces and JD's also done some bits and pieces. So uh, we're gonna kind of go around and we've talked to everyone about what they're going to be doing today. But you are welcome to join us. Um, ask questions. If you join us live on Twitch, do ask questions. They'll go straight to JD. Um, uh, and, and, and that's it. We're, we're going to hang out. We're going to chill. We're going to talk some stuff about movies and TV. We're going to pick JD's brains about all WizKids cool stuff. So if you want to know about WizKids cool stuff, do ask him. Don't be, Don't be uh, shy. Don't be afraid. Just ask him. Uh, and hopefully we can pry out some details about what's coming soon. We want to know about Frameworks 2, we want to know about Frameworks 3 and 4, and everything else that's, that's going on. So as soon as we can do that, the better. So, JD, we are going to start with you. Um, what is your approach for the next two hours? What do you hope to achieve with this mini? And if you want to explain what you've done so far, and give it a go. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what I have done so far is laid down the, uh, the base coats uh, on the skin and the wings and down here on the base, um, using my airbrush. Uh, and I did that ahead of time because I didn't want everybody to have to listen to chunk -a -chunk -a -chunk -a -chunk -a -chunk for my air compressor while we were doing this. Um, and especially considering that I don't have, uh, you know, my camera set up at my airbrush station, and that would be really boring for everybody just listening to me spraying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try to just, uh, you know, finish up the all the flesh areas here. Uh, and it looks like there's some shading I need to do over here on the arm where I had this taped off to avoid getting paint on the clear parts. Um, sure. So, yeah, that's my plan. And hopefully I can last. I just checked my GoPro uh, battery and it's at 4%. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's, we're we're going to have Steve, and then we're just going to lose JD. I think that's, yeah, that's, I think what, so. that's what's going to happen. Um, Steve. Yes. Uh, what, what are you up to, and how are you going to do it? Um, just see right. if my well, camera comes back. I, I, for the first time ever, uh, am painting this in bits and then going to assemble it after painting. So, uh, like you, I've, I've done the base already because uh, yeah. that was the fun bit. Uh, so the, you know, I've, I've, um, the, the intent was to make this look like sort of obsidian with some lava running out of it. Uh, and yeah, then I, okay, yeah. uh, and then I went for, um, this is clear plastic. So then I went in with the inks. I should have done that while I was talking to you. Um, so then I went in with the inks, um, a, an orange and a red, uh, to build up flame color. Mm -hmm. which has turned out really nice and they put a little 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 bit of orange dry brushing on at the bottom um so that that was the style i was going for uh hopefully that's that's come out it's dark on the back let's try to do some object source lighting uh, and then the rest of the bits um yeah i'm i'm just painting as we go so the intention is just to just to layer up the red try and get that in shot layer up the red oh um, wow I've done the, the base That's, color on the body. That is coming up very nice. So uh, did you prime that in black first? I, I primed everything in black, yeah. And okay. and I, so what I normally do for these shows is I will then go over with a gray dry brush to pick up yeah. the highlights to make it go quicker. But I just wanted to layer the color up on this one and uh, do the highlights in color rather than dry brush. So, so that's what I'm going to try and do. <clears throat> so where the, the black bits you've got there, is that prime or you've yeah, painted over prime. those? No, that's, that's prime. prime. That's Quite prime, shiny. So. Or is that just your yeah. lights? No, it's probably just the lights because I've got the, the camera, phone camera my, on as well. When I prime, it's always very matte. Yeah. Um, it, it might be just the primer I'm using. I don't, I don't know because I'm using airbrush primer, not, uh, not spray cam primer. Okay. don't know if that makes a difference. Uh, but what I'm going to try and do for the next two hours is is work on the wings. So I've I've just blocked this out with dark red and yeah. lighter red, uh, and I just want to try and make the you know 
make the darker red uh, a nice solid block of colour and pick out the highlights with the paint and then try and make the inside of the wings a um, the, the sort of stretch skin. So I'll be going in with some orange, a little bit of pink and um, the sort of dead flesh colour, which is a beige colour, yeah. uh, to make it look stretched um, and, and try and wet blend those together. So that, that's what we're going to try and do. You got a message there from Dragonborn. Thank you, Ian. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I did do the sword as well because I couldn't resist doing all of the <laughs> the, uh, the the clear pieces. So basically, so, you've painted. You're just going to sit and chat for two hours, really. Aren't you? Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the purple sword, the blue blue lightning, and the dark clouds, and I tried to put a little bit of uh, green flame green flame blade on there. So I need to do some oh, some dry nice. brushing on that. It's very yeah. big trouble, little China. Yeah, <laughs> that. I mean, the 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 grey cloud there. That looks. Is that you got two different tones, or again, is that just the light? Uh, no, that's just the light. So I really haven't, nice. I haven't, I like I haven't dry brushed it at all. So I'm, I need to put some dry brush highlighting on the cloud to pick out those those bits. It's, it's that, quite that is just black so ink. You've got here. I mean, I'll show on 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 my mini cam. So this is this is obviously what it looks like. This is just clear plastic, and if you think that here's here's the sword here look um and steve's painted it that way i mean that's how much detail is just hidden in the in these bobbly bits of the cloud yeah <laughs> which is just incredible i mean here's a question for you jd how how do you um i know you use that 3d artists and, and everything else to come up with this but how do you how 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 does how does the quality of that stuff just just come out because it's well, really hard to see as clear plastic it's really really hard to see we have some How really good really is. good sculptors um uh yeah. you know and of course they're not sculpting in clear plastic they're sculpting in you know cad yeah. programs um but uh yeah we've got really good sculptors um and uh we do a lot of uh testing back and forth while the sculpting is going on to make sure that everything looks the way we want it to cool cool me back over there of course i have to give a shout out to uh our concept artist tom babby who was the one who you know came up with all of the individual components and placement of these things on here yeah. uh, and so you know then you give the shout out to den of imagination uh we're our main sculptors for frameworks and uh well basically everything um we have others but yeah. uh they're the ones that did this uh and yeah they uh they brought tom's concept art to life so to speak Plastic it is, it is phenomenal. Right. So I am going to start. Um, I'm going to start with some plastics. I want to paint some flames. And I'm going to work with inks. I'm using. I've got some uh, Vallejo game ink. I'm just going with kind of a red and yellow. So it's my flame mix. I don't know how this is going to come out, but I'm willing to give it a try. Um, oh, yeah. And this is the base. So all of this. Is, oh, nice. is the base and these are these are these are different pieces again you kind of stick them front and back glue them together um then the base is separate to the big base here then you glue that down and yeah the, i think that's come out really really well yeah it's it really well it's great looks like we have a question from big tooth pete yep we do <clears throat> so it was uh, how do you go about organizing the parts to fit on a sprue Okay, so that's actually a bit of a process, and it's mostly done by the factory. Um, they uh, they essentially assign their engineers to take the sculpted pieces um, and then determine how they need to be separated. Uh, uh, you know, so you might have like a complete arm, but for whatever reason they decide, okay, we need to cut this off at the wrist, and we'll do that as one piece, and then the rest of the arm will be a separate piece, and it's to make sure that there aren't any undercuts when they do the the actual tooling of this, you know, undercuts will keep the piece from coming out of the mold because it's in more metal mold. Um, so once they've got all those pieces separated, then they just start trying to place things on frames to make sure everything's full. Cool. Are you playing music? We have some chill music now. Okay. You never, you never, you never had that. You're like, I can hear music. What's, what's going on? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's quite disconcerting when it comes on. It's like, yes. am I, am I it hearing? sounds like the music I normally listen to, you know? So yeah. I was just thinking, uh-oh, did I accidentally turn so, on one of my, uh, one we've, of my streams? We've had <laughs> your iTunes playing in the background. We have, <laughs> right. uh, we've had a few upgrades since the last time you was on. So we've, um, uh, by using StreamYards, we've got some nice chill-out music. So previously, we, we couldn't hear the, the chill-out music, but the audience could. But uh, uh, this time... Same. Same with the trailers. It's like obviously, I've always used the Vallejo trailer, and normally because I have Twitch on mute when we start the show, I never hear it. So it's a, to yeah. that was the first time I'd heard time. Yeah. Vallejo trailer. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, uh, you the audience, again, those of you who are joining us live, if um, you have any questions for for JD for Whiz Kids, uh, do. Do shout out, do ask him, do let us know. Yeah, please. If the, mu if the music does get too loud for our painters or for you, the audience, do let us know as well. Um, I am going to be busy following these instructions. I'm going <laughs> to make, make some flames. <laughs> that is one of the drawbacks of uh, the clear plastic bits, is it's sometimes difficult to tell how they're supposed to go together. Yeah, and, and troll fit before applying glue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Where's that comment come from? I thought I deleted that one. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's the bit we actually we don't have from, from Brush Off is, the, uh, is our gold stars. That's something we need to figure out how to do again. Um, I'm sure there's a way. Right. We, we don't have that currently. So we need to bring back our stars. The challenge is back. <laughs> Got another question. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, JD, any more Dragonborn or half dragons coming in the next wave? And then the follow up was also dragons. Question mark. Um, next wave, no. Um, <clears throat> we we had a lot of plans for dragons, um, and we're finding it very difficult to uh, to make those happen without. Them being outrageously expensive so we're trying to figure out what we can do to make those more affordable um you know this is the most expensive model we had in wave one um, yeah. i don't know what it runs for out there but i know the msrp is close to 100 dollars here in the united states yeah um and uh yeah it's you know it's a great figure it's a fantastic figure um and it's it's a it, it, i think it's worth every penny um, but it's also very detailed, and that tends to raise the prices up. Yeah, it, it goes just beyond just something you'd use on the table anyway. It's a centerpiece, really, isn't it? Yeah, this is something. Yeah, this is, depending on my paint job, this is going on the shelf behind me. This is yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's one that's one trying to do a good job. Yeah. Good job <laughs> yeah, this is not the sort of thing you paint in two hours and and rush it. Oh, you've lost your GoPro. Ah. You might have to okay. to plan B. Plan B indeed. Uh, give me a moment. Well, the other thing is, does it, uh, if you can still hear us, JD, does it charge while it's plugged in? <laughs> uh, it's supposed to. Uh. <clears throat> Uh, I think it's just it's one of the drawbacks of the uh, the GoPro uh, is that it has a very short battery life. All right, so this uh, I'm just gonna put I'm gonna put me on the big screen, Steve. Look at that. Um, so this is the the fire. Now the fire is gonna sit somewhere behind this. So then I'm gonna ink it, and you'll have flames shooting out. Well, the flames and smoke and stuff shooting out the base. That is my plan. Um, we'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah, it's just going to sit right in that. So you can see that some of that base is colored through. I wonder, that'd be really nice if you could get an LED in there. Do it that way. It could, it could be nice. So that's my plan is I'm going to play around with that for the next wee bit. 
So I'm going to have to struggle through with just uh, this camera uh, unless we can very quickly figure out a way to uh, connect with my iPhone. Um, the, the link I sent you on your email will work on your phone. Okay. It's situated here then. I'm going to leave that to dry because it's still a little bit wet. But I will leave it there. And now I will concentrate. I'm going to do a bit of skin tone. Um, now for skin tone, audience, what do you think? Uh, Slaughter red or blood red? I'm using, so for skin tone, I'm going to use the Army Painter Speed Paints. And for the flames, I'm using Vallejo inks which I've never really used ink. I've used inks on small minis or regular size minis but never on something certainly not that big which is going to be highly highly visible but I'm thinking dark I don't know I was thinking dark red but Steve's suggesting go brighter red that's good what because you've got a nice type of red on your body Steve yeah on the military you mean on a miniature, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to put him off. He's not doing it. He's not falling for it. Though. So I, I, I just suggested you go for a brighter red because you've got brown on on the wings, so to put some contrast yeah. in it. And don't forget, you're going to have light coming up from below because of the fire. No, that's true. Yeah. Let's try with the. We're going with the blood red. Let's see how well this works. So, to those of you who are watching live, um, are you painting with us? That's good. If you were, if you're watching this on YouTube and you just got this on the background and you're just chilling out, what are you painting? Do let us know. We're just. Curious. Are you painting frameworks? Are you painting something else? Is it a big project? Are you doing terrain? What are you up to? Right, let's put it that way. Safety first. There we go. Uh, Dragonborn says he's doing Legion clone troopers this evening. Oh yeah, he he uh, he fell over in the shop and fell. <laughs> He was uh, up into the uh, in, into the store shelf and all yeah. the minis fell in his bag. His yeah. wallet went. Oh no! I've just accidentally paid for those. <laughs> what a what a what a shame! God, I hate it when that happens. Yeah. Oh. And see straight away as I'm painting this, the uh, the definition is really showing up on this figure. I'm just spreading some paint around quite haphazardly at the moment. So what, what was the last thing everybody painted before this? I painted the Tiefling Warlock from Frameworks Wave 1. It's going to be my character in a D&D game. I, I've, I've done that one as well and was using it in our um, Witchlight campaign. That's I love that mini. I think, I think the last thing I painted I think it was the uh, the Durgar, the enlarged Durgar mini from again from from WizKids. Because uh, right. one, they sent it over. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and two, I used it in my Frost Maiden campaign for the table. And it's uh, it's a great it's a great mini actually. Because you you used uh, a wagon as well, didn't you? Paint up the wagon with the polar bears. 
Uh, yeah, that was ages ago. That was. Um, that was for when the campaign started. So that was that was last year sometime. I did that. Oh right. Probably about this time last year. Bloody hell. <laughs> I, I, I like that me. wagon. Um, the wagon. Uh, I picked up from uh, Richard over at uh, Warrior Prince. Yes. Yeah. Who, by the way, you can find on Instagram. Just search for Warrior Prince 3D. For all his plastic goodies. Uh, yeah, it's a great, it's a great sculpt. I was going to say mini, but it's a great sculpt. The browser has blocked access for my mic and camera. Hooray! Is that on your phone? Yes. Uh, oh, okay. You, all you just need to do is, when you connect, is mute your phone. Mm -hmm. um, and it should work. Seems like I have technical difficulties every time I do these streams. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's not a problem. That's what happens with live. But it's the best way to be. Plus it gives us a head start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what yeah, I'm hearing is that you, you organized all this. You, you made sure yeah. this happened. I have the power. Um... <laughs> yeah, Dragonborn says, blame Steve. Dave always does. That, that is true. What was that? Uh, Big Tough Poop says he, uh, Big Tough Poop. <laughs> Big, Big, Big Tough Pete says. No, that, that was not going to go away. <laughs> that is so much worse than saying JD Wicker. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> he's, he's got a Big Tough Poop. <laughs> so you better, you better sit down with that one. Um, you got a. He's working on, was it Battlefleet? <laughs> Starship for Battlefleet Gothic. I don't know that one. You have to put a link to that one in, in, in chat, Pete. And if you are painting something with us, uh, again, thank you. Give us a nudge on Instagram. Let's let's see what you're doing. And if you've, oop, you want some painting advice from JD, do, uh, do let him know. Hello, Dragon Skull Studios. How is everybody? So he's, he says he's just in from through the door from work. He's tuning in. Good. I keep, I keep moving a little bit. So sorry I'm, if it's not, you don't see it on camera as such. But I'm just putting a bit of skin tone all, all over so that I can go into some detail in a bit.
And we mentioned, um, we've been talking a lot about frameworks and this, the Balor is the big, the big one from season one. But question for you, JD, is uh, we've, we're starting to see, or we've seen the, uh, what's going to be in season two, series two mm -hmm. frameworks. And I was quite surprised to see there's some Pathfinder stuff in there. Oh yeah. Which is really nice. You've got some of the, the main characters in there as well. Some of the iconic heroes. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's Efren's in there as well, the wizard. Efren, yeah, the human Ezrin, wizard. We've also yeah. got uh, Mauriciel, the elf rogue. Cool. And then wave three will have some stuff that was originally planned to go along with those. Um, so there will be at least a couple more Pathfinder figures in there. And then nice. I am arranging a meeting next week with the sculpting team to talk about wave four. Uh, and if I have my way and things work out and, you know, all the stars align, uh, we'll have even more Pathfinder figures in Wave 4. Oh, wow. Fantastic. So be because, um, like, Framework Series 1, uh, was that kind of like a test to, to test the market? Or are we going to see <clears throat> quicker releases now of Series 2 and Series 3 and Series 4? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I would like to say the answer to that is yes. Uh, but I am not always in charge of how soon things get released. Ah, uh, so you're right. Um, yeah, that's, uh, there are always factors that, that come up that make things a little more complicated than we originally thought. Yeah. Is it, I mean, is it, has it been a year since season one was out? Series, yeah. I keep saying season, but series one. Um, S series one, wave one. Um, wave one. Came out in April in the United States last year. Okay, well, yeah. uh, I'm not sure when it arrived over there. It was it was delayed because then we we still had shipping problems and everything else. I'm not even sure if that's calmed down now. Uh, all the shipping delays and things. I think now I, I've got most of the uh, kickstarters I was expecting. I think most of those have actually all all arrived now so i'm not getting those shipping container updates anymore <laughs> like your boat is stuck in a hurricane and will be delayed Pretty good. How are you going, Steve? You okay? Yep. I'm just going a lot slower than when I sit up and watch you. You've already played and painted half the body. Yep. And I've done three wing panels. Go on and talk us through it. You've got to paint and talk at the same time. Alright. So I'm blending orange, yellow, pink, and base sort of colour to try how? and just. Oh, I see. I was sorry. I was, I was like, how are you doing that? But you're, you're using your wet palette. Yeah. So let's try and get on camera. And there. Wow. So what I'm trying to do, um, I'll probably put some red wash on it and then 
a little bit of dry brushing after that, I think. I don't know. It's discovery at the moment, I think. Um, what, what sort of colours stand out more? Yeah. It's going a bit peach at the moment. Let's put some more darker contrast at the top. Hey, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Seen any comments because they're moving down. Oops, I'll just put my yeah, just put a finger on his head. One of the things with um, this particular mini as well is he is spiky. <laughs> At the end of these <laughs> wings, he has these like talon things, and they're sharp. Oh, and I wanted to bring this up as well. This this, this thing that's sort of base. You can see how um, how tall that is. You got a, an inch and a bit. On, the, on these if you think stepping on a d4 is bad <laughs> you you step on this in the middle of the night on a bare foot that's that's just going to come out of your foot that's going to come out the top of your foot that's what that is that's 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 going to hurt so don't leave your minis on the floor <laughs> yeah that's that's contrary to design goals dave um <laughs> <laughs> what about where else do you, else else do you play D&D &D? I, I, you lost me here <laughs> natural one you must take off your shoes and socks and stand on <laughs> you must stand on this yeah, it's, the 243rd layer of the abyss I think is pretty much all just Legos um, <laughs> looks like Dragon School Studio has a question uh, will the second wave be released this quarter um the planned release date in the United States is June. Yes. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Hey, it's I, Kelly. I, I have a follow-up question to that then. Okay. Uh, which is probably going to be—it's it's probably going to be no. I, in fact, I, I'm sure the answer is going to be no. But if it's in June, no. And <laughs> and Wiz Kids are going to be coming over to the UK Games Expo. Which starts on June the second. Uh, Are we gonna get any teasers? Um, I can almost guarantee you that they will be bringing over uh, the uh, pre-painted ones that we've made. Uh, oh, really? I say wow. pre-painted, but <laughs> the painted ones that Den of Imagination did for us. Oh wow! From Wave Two. Cool. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, I'll definitely get some photos of that. Um, uh, I've already mentioned to, to JD before, but uh, for those of you who, who don't know, uh, myself and Steve are part of the press team for UK Games Expo, and we will be uh, we will just be hounding with kids <laughs> at, at their stand now, and we'll get you some photos. Don't so say stay hounding. Tuned. <laughs> yeah. Hounding. We will be blackmailing them with cups of tea and custard creams so to get you some photos i would think that the band of badgers would be badgering whiskey oh there you <laughs> go <laughs> yes we will be <laughs> who who um I know who's coming over, but how, 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 who's coming over? Who, who uh, can, that's a good who can question. people expect to see? Um, I think you'll be seeing uh, Will. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure who else is going to be there. 
if you need help, if you need, you know, if you need painters or game people, um, I can volunteer Steve. He's he's good. Clipping that. I think you've been voluntold. <laughs> <laughs> If you need some heavy boxes lifted, Steve's, Steve's there. <laughs> Can he do both at the same time? Probably. <laughs> let's, let's find out. Um, I'll hold the camera. Camera in one hand, box, box in the other. That's, that's for the next stream. Yep. The test. Well, my camera just woke up again. My GoPro just woke up again. It's uh, apparently at about 1% now. <laughs> so I could be on for another, I don't know, four minutes? <laughs> they, they are supposed to be very good for, um, for streaming, but I didn't realize that they were only on battery still. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's oops, it's um, it's plugged into a power source, so it's charging the entire time. It's just burning power faster than it's accruing yeah. power. Kind of like my bank account in the late nineties. <laughs> So I know um, from WizKids, uh, I think they're also showcasing the new Onslaught board game. Oh yeah. Which I'm, I'm really keen to, to have a look at. It looks it looks really, really good. Um, and some, it's a very some, solid game. Uh, some other people that we, that we know who are in the States, they've got their hands on it and they've, they've played it, they had a go, and they were singing praises about it. So really looking forward to actually seeing it in person having a game um just having a play with it we've also got um trials of tempest coming out if it's not already out very soon um with any luck they'll bring a copy of that as well okay is that a, a new board game or is it that is a, a new D, D themed board game it's um oh, i've not heard, not heard of this one then yeah, it's, uh, it's got some similarities to Onslaught, but the main difference is that uh, you have your own individual character, yeah. um, as opposed to playing a team of four or five or whatever you know, the scenario calls for. Because I got... Um, the first board game one I got was Dungeons and Mad Mage. Okay. And I, bought, I bought the pre-painted one as well. And... It's f absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I picked up a, a few of those adventure game series games in. Um, oh gosh, Wizards actually was still producing them, I think. Um, yeah, and I have one. Uh, I have. Um, I was just talking about it earlier. What's it called? I'm drawing a blank. Uh, I have one of them from. Well, this one uh, from the WizKids lines. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fun. My Valor is deciding it doesn't want to be attached to its base anymore. So with the with onslaught, are the minis pre-painted, or is it you get two different options? They are pre-painted. Trials of Tempest has two different options. Uh, oh, right. Okay. And pre-painted. Yeah, I thought that was a nice, a nice option. But one of the things that we are talking about doing with Onslaught is um, after the set has released, um, at some point offering the the miniatures uh, as unpainted miniatures, um, yeah. so that you can customize them however you like. Because you can you can buy is it is it right? Am I right in saying you can buy expansions? Oh, yes. by other teams are those yes. are those pre-painted or yes okay 
Yeah, so yeah, having the option of, uh, especially for painters as well. Absolutely. You go in and do your own color schemes, but you like you like the uh, the sculpts, but paint it your way. So I just realized uh, I'm doing that thing we were talking about earlier. Where I want to lean really far forward on my screen and paint, but then you can't actually see. Not that this is much better, I think. Uh, way back here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think my paint handle is big enough, Kelly? <laughs> This is a huge paint handle. This is gigantic. Or wait, are you being sarcastic in which case? This is not that big of a paint handle. Relax. Uh, what, what is it? It's some sort of um, big drink cup or something. A drink cup? Yeah, what is what is the paint handle you're using? Is it is it repurposed? Oh, the, the uh, handle it, that I was using. Yeah, uh, this was uh, a uh, Talenti uh, gelato. Uh, ah, okay. Canister here. Um, yeah, trying to reuse those those plastics. Yep. And it's got a um, inside is a, uh, a spool of twine. Give it some weight. has a question I'll put it up on screen there you go I don't think that's wishful thinking Kelly that's uh, I'm pretty sure that that's allowed um, I'm not sure <laughs> if it's a tournament rule or not um, but I'm pretty sure that uh, yeah the idea is that you know if you've got another figure as long as it's clear what it is and you and your opponent agree that you can you know tell what it is then yeah i think yeah. it's fair game uh, but again that's you know kind of a, a tournament organizer question what i'm gonna we're doing well we're doing well we're painting for nearly 50 minutes we're, we're doing well um i'm just gonna chuck up on screen um some details for everybody so what you can see here so as, let's see if we can put this on there we go so what you can see on screen at the moment this is the render so this is the the, the 3d render that was made of the sculpt um, and you would have seen this on the boxes or more than likely you probably would have seen the, one of the painted versions now if I flip backwards and forwards you can see that the, the horns and the sword changed. That's because in frameworks, you get optional pieces. So um, one of the things that I've been doing, uh, if I take that away, I'll show you over here, is so this this is a this is a big mini. So I've got three spews spews spruce <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the instructions. But when you read the instructions. Um, you can you can pick a mix kind of thing. You can go down this way, or you can go down that way, and it gives you some uh, variety and variations. Plus, you get a few extras. So one of the or two of the extras that you get in this particular set is this. This is like a mound of skulls. And there's a demon skull at the top of it, um, and it's two halves. You kind of glue it together, and you have that, which is kind of nice. And you get some rocks at the bottom, and then you've got the rest of the skulls. It's like something else to play with. And also, which I quite like, it's kind of like this, you get an evil book, and I have to kind of focus, 
but you can get an evil. Uh, it's quite big, actually. Look, lots of definition on there. There's a face so on a, the front. A tiny necro Necronomicon. Necronomicon, yeah. And it's a proper book as well. I mean, look, you can see the back and front cover. Yeah. It's, it's really, really nice. If I recall yes. correctly, that's actually the Book of Infinite Darkness. <sighs> wow. So, interestingly enough, uh, going back to the question that um, uh, Big Tooth Pete asked earlier. That nice nice becomes... job saying that so very carefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that book came in three pieces. Yeah. It had, it had the two halves and the spine. Um, so it's an interesting split. It was, so yeah, uh, it, was, it was a good question from Pete earlier on how how they actually design that when they're splitting yeah. the model up and then laying it out on the sprues. Yeah, the rule is basically that the more detail it has. Uh, especially in three dimensions, uh, the more it needs to be separated into individual pieces. Ah, yep. okay. Um, if you know, we could have done that book as simply, you know, like an oblong box with a little bit of detail in the cover, yep. and it would have, you know, it would have sufficed. But it would have just been very plain, and it would have been just one piece, you know, etc. Um, getting it so that uh, you can put it in the mold, and then actually have the mold let it go when the mold opens. That's why it requires breaking it into difficult pieces. Yeah. And now the other thing. Um, so should we come back to here? Uh, and JD mentioned earlier uh, the den of imagination. Thank you. This is it. This is uh, the den of imagination. This is there. They had a physical copy and they painted it. That's incredible. Uh, so that's the front. That's the back. Look at it. I mean, the flames, the rock, the detail, the wings. That is, that is absolutely incredible. I just know they've got like a mane. They've given him a black mane on the back. Now, I I haven't done that. I've just gone with, I've kept him bald. Um, I'm giving the flame mane. Um, and there yeah. you are, side by side. That's that must be another clear piece that you stick on. It is. Now, I've yeah, seen it. Yeah. 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 It actually uh, broke off at one point, and uh, I just left it off because I knew that I would need to paint it separately. Yeah. But that looks I, incredible. I, I, I hadn't noticed that bit on the spur, actually. I'm going to find that piece. Yeah, it's uh, sort of triangular. Yeah. And now it's lost. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Yep. I actually did lose one of his horns. I had to break open a completely different uh, box to get the horn out of that. So, I mean, this is an interesting question as well, actually. Uh, has anyone that you've seen done anything interesting with the spare bits in terms of creating sort of an imaginary creature? <laughs> I have seen people use bits from uh, different models um, yep. to jazz up the, the individual separate models. Um, I have not seen anybody make an entirely new creature, I don't think. It's one of the things, though, that um, uh, it's kind of a segue into something that we did to improve Wave 2. Uh, with Wave 1, all of the individual characters, you know, like the, the Tiefling Warlock that I painted recently and the Dragonborn Paladin and all that sort of thing, um, there's enough parts in the box to make one, and you'll have some bits left over. Um, so we decided to uh, add some value in Weave 2. Um, and so now we've got a second pose for each of those characters, uh, oh, assuming wow. there's space on the sprue. Yeah. Um, uh, so that, yeah, you can build two completely different figures, and then they'll both be complete, and they can. You can have both of them on the table at the same time. Yeah. That, that's cool. That's cool. Right, yeah, so we've, we've gone through going. all of Wave 2 and all of Wave 3 <laughs> uh, and added stuff wherever we could. Um, so we, if we look at the, the frame and saw that there was blank space, we just went through a list of objects we could add in and try to decide what was thematic and what would look good. Yeah. 
So here's here's a here's a cheeky question for you. <laughs> so, if you are about to launch Wave Two, and you're already working on Wave Three and potentially Wave Four, does that mean that you have some like factory pieces with you right now? <laughs> that, that you're allowed to show. <laughs> uh, you know, I I can't deny what you just said. Uh, that is a question. <laughs> Great answer. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone from WizKids is watching, just turn away now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, part of the process is that we do get advanced copies of things so that we can make sure that you know everything looks the way it's supposed to and. Um, so how, how much yeah. how many rounds of testing do you have to do it and, depends and have you had like really bad ones um we haven't had anything in sprue that uh has been you know like no we're just not doing that you know send it back um yeah. and i think there's been maybe like one or two in the course of my time with whiz kids uh in unpainted miniatures and you know the nolzers line and, and sure. the deep pathfinder deep cuts that I've looked at and thought, I don't, I wouldn't want to paint this. I don't know if anybody else would either. Um, but sense. that's really, really uncommon. Our sculptors do a fantastic job. Um, and the only time that we encountered something that I was like, I don't know about this, uh, that was actually kind of my fault because I, I think oh. I described it badly when I asked them to, <laughs> to sculpt it. Are you using the, the same factory? Uh, different factories. We have a lot of different factories that we work with. Uh, Kelly says, Dave, you are shameless. I don't think you're giving us any new information, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you don't ask, you don't get. So there you go. completely set properly I've got a little bit of red on my finger there but I'm not worried so I've got the sword so uh, I'm just gonna which one is it that one uh, hello um, there we go so that's the sword so this is a, this is gonna be a flame sword and there's the hilt there same one that I chose. Yeah. So that's that one. And then if I put him over there because he's still drying. This is the base. So you can start to see where that's connected. How it's connected. That's, I mean, that's gonna look good, fantastic. That's a good couple of inches on, on just on this piece of flame and uh well that's all flame, isn't it? Just yeah, all up. the way up. So, Dave, are you planning to um, to do the bottom part of that flame in a very light color so that the the central uh, magma underneath it shows through? Uh, well, I was gonna kind of um, not that one, yeah, that one. I was gonna kind of see what they've got. I mean, so Den of Imagination, they've used a, a good solid mix all the way through. They haven't done like a campfire where you get the bright in the middle at the base. And then it's it goes out, and I that's what I had in my mind. Right. I don't think I could do what that Den have done, um, but then on the yeah. comp, the comp is more what I was thinking, where it's much like the whip is much brighter. You got the yellow, and then going down into that orange. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping by using the ink, it's really going to be bright and help. Um, but do I start with the, do I, if I'm starting at the base and I start, um, let me just come back here. If I go to that one again, if I start the base, um, with the yellow, uh, do I, I want to start slightly higher because that ink is going to run down gravity. Sure. 
And then do I start with the orange ink at the very top and let that kind of just blend itself in with the, while both colors are still wet? Uh, yeah, wet blending is certainly a, a solid plan there. Um, it may not run as far as, as you hope. Um, it's okay. going to be very tricky, I think, to get it to, to flow exactly where you want to mix exactly when you want, you know, at what point yeah. along the, the flame. Um, yeah, you'll notice that on the Dead of Imagination version, they didn't do the magma parts. Um, yeah, see... There's no magma in those cracks. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, they did include the book of Thank You to book, Kelly, yeah. Vile Darkness down there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that, uh, Dave, what you might want to do is um, uh, lighten up the, the, the central magma pit. Yeah. Um, so that it does shine through better and uh, it will reflect light back that comes through uh, that comes through the, the clear plastic of the flame. Yeah. Um, so it will definitely look brighter at the, at the base. Let me try that one. Okay. Uh, it looks like uh, somebody had a question there. Dragon Skull Studio. Um, oh, yes. The Hell Wasp Paint Night Kit. Uh, Nice. Uh, can you tease any new ones coming out? Um, I cannot, at this time, tease any new uh, Paint Night kits coming out. I'm sorry, I wish I could. Um, but, uh, yeah, that has to be, uh, that has to be a, a well-kept secret for now. Is there anything you would like to see in a new Paint Night kit? Dragon Skull Studio? Hmm. Or really anybody. Have you have you done? Um, I know there's things like in there. The slard was done. We have mm -hmm. a troll. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the the. There was a giant in there. Space hamster. The space hamster, yes. Drider. Mm -hmm. That was the frameworks one. What, what about, uh, have has there ever been um, some classic monsters? So... The original one was a Beholder. Yep, yeah, Beholder. Um, Although that wasn't really a formal paint kit. That was more of a, uh, hey, retailer, buy these things, sell them, <laughs> and then have the people paint them in the store. Here's a plastic bag with all the components. Uh, I, I'm always a fan of the Underdark creatures. Like, um, okay. we got... Uh, and sort of demons you've got of rock mm -hmm. i haven't seen one of those for a long time um and uh something that i mentioned to steve the other day is one of the things i want to pick up at uk games expo is i want to get a nothic oh yeah like, because in frostmade so it's great because it's, in, it's part of the starter kit or the original starter kit for minds of Fandalen. um there's a nothic in there but in icewind dale when you get to the caves of hunger there's lots. Um, so yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at picking up some Nothics, I think. Nothic is an interesting idea. Dragonborn Industries wants a skeletal dragon or a Dracolich. Yeah, dragons are tricky. They're they're big. And the, yeah. the bigger they are, the more detail they have and the harder they are and the more expensive they are to produce. No luck finding the giant space hamster? Yeah, it it sold fast. Uh, yeah, I actually had some people contact me uh, from inside the company and say, "Hey, how do we feel about reprinting this?" <laughs> oh. Have you done many reprints? Uh, of the standard unpainted miniatures, yes. Uh -uh. Um, we're actually uh, expecting the arrival of two really big shipments uh, of reprinted miniatures um, very soon. Um, Paint kits are a little different. Um, they tend to be tied to the wave that they come out alongside. Um, mm -hmm. Like the giant space hamster and the the heron gone um, were both kind of like experiments to see if we could tie something to a pre-painted miniature release. Yeah. So we just did unpainted versions of those pre-painted miniatures and made those part of the paint kit. 
Um, but uh, yeah, you, you previously mentioned the Vrock. Um, that one is in wave two of Frameworks. Ooh, nice. Okay, so there's a, what, what, uh, I was just trying to think of what is actually, uh, what is an interesting sculpt to paint and what could offer a bit of, um, a bit of shape to it. So like an Umber Hulk mm -hmm. is great, but it's probably just the one color. <laughs> so it's not very interesting yes. to paint where a Vrock has lots of different colors, has loads of detail and you put it in front of the of your players and they're like what the hell is that <laughs> see this is dragonborn industry says um g gelatinous cube I, I would love to paint a gelatinous cube because i get a real kick out of doing the the clear plastic you know and it, 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 you go back to the one uh where you've got the bit that goes over the top and you've got the stuff on the inside i, I, I would really get a kick out of painting all the miniatures on the inside and yep. then uh, and then the, the transparent faces yeah uh gelatinous cube is um it is in development oh. i will say for for uh, frameworks um, i was going to say it has to surely it has to be because it was in the D, &D movie yeah surely like things like that like a displacer beast the, 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 those things are just going to be in demand now, surely. Yes. Yeah, very aware of that. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, uh, again, it's a lattice cube, mostly transparent. Great fun to have one on the table. Um, yeah. A little difficult to get them under control price-wise. Um, right. So uh, I'm working on it. Yeah. Uh, I can't really say much more than that, but um, if I can make that happen, I'm going to. Because I love painting this too. You know, it's uh, it's not just, you know, hey, glue the pieces together and, and now you have a gelatinous cube. I mean, that's that's not fun. You know, you want it to have some character to it. And yes. Tom Babby did some really amazing concept art for this and has a lot of character. And he and I had long sessions of talking back and forth about this and, you know, trying to figure out how do you make that fit in... Uh, a frame because if each side is you know a 10 by 10 square I think it's pretty big really fast and that's a lot of, of tooling yeah um Steve yes sir can you um are you able to showcase your flames again on the camera uh yeah i'm just gonna <sighs> still are you copying off this work i am yeah <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me get that in focus you do it in school as well so that's fine so you've gone dark at the bottom i've gone dark at the bottom and light at the top yes yeah so i'm going I, I, getting older steve that's just what happens <laughs> I'm I'm going the other way. Yeah. So for me, I'm going to have yellow at the base and then go up to to red. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So just paint the whole thing yellow. Uh, and, and then you and, and, and then go over colors. the dark colours. Yeah. But, but you got to make yeah. sure it's still it's still wet, so it doesn't sort yes. of bleed in too much. Yeah. So you want to pick out the, the the peaks. So start at the top and work down to the point you want it to blend in. If so, I mean. Yeah. So when you when you put the paint on, the paint goes on at the top and runs out by the time you get to to where you want to finish. Yeah. Right. And, and always brush in the same direction all the time. Yeah. Cool. Good. Good. Well, thank you all. Uh, right. um, we are 10 past the hour, so we have 50 minutes to paint some flames. Uh, brush down somewhere. Where is it? So I'm, I'm now at the stage of waiting for paint to dry. Cool. It's the kind of show this is, Steve. It's like installing windows. <laughs> Do you remember those days? 
<laughs> I remember the days when Windows came on 3.5 inch discs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I remember five and a quarter inch floppy disks. <laughs> throwing around ideas for paint kits there in the, uh, in the chat. At least I think that's what you're uh, still discussing. You might be just discussing uh, unpainted miniatures in general there. Yeah, it was, there was a lot of um, lot of ideas for, for paint nights. It was good. Yeah, the trick with paint night kits, um, and this is the thing that always hangs me up, is they have to be big enough to make them worthwhile right you know the box is a good size box and they have to you know kind of stand out on the box um so you know you're talking in general uh a large figure um yeah. and often a, a fairly big large figure um or a kind of a smaller huge figure um and then as you were pointing out it has to be colorful it can't just be all one color it can't just be like you know subtle variations of gray or whatever i kind of took a big risk with the uh, the enlarged work art um yeah because yeah that's a lot of that's a lot of gray to paint on a figure um but um yeah i think you'd be surprised looking through the uh, the monster manual how quickly you run out of interesting things that are going to meet those yes. criteria I, I wonder if it's because you get those kind of uh beasts and everything else i, I think that's that's the that's the fun thing with things like demons and devils is they're humanoid in shape and nature most of them um but they've got so much going on so much variety and they come in all different sizes which is one of the one of the things i really like which is always always fun <laughs> dragonborn industry says no to frameworks npcs and townsfolk I can understand that. Gluing together, you know, the town crier. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a little extra work. You know, I mean, I think one of the things that people don't quite realize about the Frameworks line is that it's meant for, I don't, I don't want to say expert painters, um, but it's definitely aimed at somebody who's had a little experience first. Yes. Um, you know, Nolster's Marvelous Miniatures, Pathfinder Deep Cuts, WizKids Deep Cuts, those are all, they're pre-primed, they're, they're soft plastic. Um, they're made that way for a reason, because you want somebody to be able to just go pick it up at a reasonable price and, you know, start painting and just have fun with it. Um, yep. But these, these are more complicated. These are for people who've had some experience painting miniatures and hopefully some experience assembling miniatures. Um, and um, so, unless you're me. Yeah. <laughs> And you're just doing it for ratings. <laughs> you mean to tell me that if you weren't doing this right now, you would just be like, I'm going to paint something completely different. <laughs> uh, no, actually, this is this is on the to do list as well as, as the uh, beholder. But it's. Um, this is this is a this is this is. The one I was most scared of, actually. Um, and since I started gluing it together, because one of the first things I said, I said, I think I said it to you as well, but I said it to Steve, um, was I was quite surprised how quick and easy it went. It actually did just go together. You think something like this is, it looks, it's, the pieces are highly, highly detailed. And putting it together 
I was worried. By the time I finished, I was like, oh no, this is fine. I'm like, I'm okay with this now. I can see what it's what it's trying to get me to do. Yeah, it's, and that, it's, that was the main thing. It's very daunting when you open up that box and you see all those plastic pieces sort of laid out in front of you. And I always advise people, you know, don't just start snipping pieces off. Um, you know, they're numbered. The parts are right there, the, or the part numbers yeah. are right there on the frames. Um, so, you know, the assembly guy that comes with it, that's what it's there for. Um, especially true with the drider. I've seen so many people, you know, just snip off all the, the legs of the drider and then try to figure <laughs> out where they go <laughs> afterward. Fun. Yep. Uh, the beholder, even the eye stalks there, they, they have specific places where they're meant to fit. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, uh, the thing about frameworks that you brought up a minute ago is now completely gone from my head because I talked about something else. Never mind. Steve, rewind the show. What were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, you were talking about how well it went together, and, and, and I, I concur with yes. that. Um, yeah. I, 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 the one I struggled with was the warlock actually uh, -huh. uh the clear plastic on the warlock i struggled to get that right um and in the end it went together but i'm pretty sure it wasn't as intended in the instructions <laughs> it doesn't matter cause it still looks great yeah the trick is with those you have to get a running start yeah <laughs> um no i was gonna say uh you just reminded me thank you about uh, the uh, the ease of assembling these things. So one of the improvements that we made, uh, uh, several of the improvements we made were for the packaging for these. Um, and one of the things we're going to be doing starting with wave two is putting a difficulty rating ah, on cool. these so that you can look at that and determine whether or not you think you have the ability to actually assemble these pieces. And because we still have those exploded views on the back, where you can see all of the pieces that go into it, you can get a better look at it and say, oh, that's, yeah, of course, that's a, that's a level one difficulty. That's really easy. I can easily put that together. I have the experience for that. <clears throat> I'm less confident that I have, you know, the experience to tackle a level two or level three. And, you know, we've tried to set it up so that the, the really complicated ones are fewer and far between. Yeah. Um, so it's not just, you know, hey, here's a bunch of complicated miniatures. Please buy one. You know, that's that doesn't help anybody. Um, so having the difficulty rating on there um, will, in theory, let people choose, uh, you know, their their experience, their assembly experience. That makes sense. It's good. Do you think that? Um... You, you were talking about paint kits. Mm -hmm. The uh, could you do a frameworks paint kit so you get the paints, like you get the battle? Or could you get the paints with it, for example? You mean like the drider? Is is that is that what you is that what's coming? Oh, there you go. Oh no, it's already out. Oh, that was in wave it? one. We have a drider paint kit for frameworks drider paint kit. Yeah. Oh, I've not seen that at all. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. <laughs> I know we made one. I have a copy on my on my shelf in my office. Um, I'm not I'm not seeing it. And by that I mean I'm not seeing it in the in the shops. I'm not seeing it in the Anybody in oh, the chat want to uh, check really quickly and, and see if that's out yeah. there somewhere? Maybe I'm maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe we cancel we'll that. I have, uh, have to check out UK Games Expo and see what's see who's got what. If I see one, I'll take a photo and send it to him. So I see one in, out in the wild. Ancient Fire Dragon says yes. Oh. In the UK. Ancient yeah, that's that's always in a qualifier. Yeah. I remember, uh, actually, it was almost, it was a year and a day ago when we first did a stream uh, where I I was on here painting a miniature with you guys. Cool. Because I got a Happy notification yesterday from Facebook saying, hey, remember <laughs> a year ago when you did this? Yeah. <laughs> Get yeah, anniversaries. Yeah. Um, I haven't got any better, by the way. So that's <laughs> you, 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 haven't, you haven't missed much. Um, I'm still you still have painting. To, uh, 
You've got to take a step back from time to time and look at your progress. Yeah, Dragonborn Industries posted a link. And that's, uh... Cool. Yeah. Right, I've got some of that, and I've got some of this. Okay, so I'm not crazy. I didn't imagine that. Hmm. Well, you know, at least I'm not crazy about that. check and see if there's any battery life in my GoPro. You can all see what I'm doing again. Here we go. Awesome. So do you want to talk us through, if I make you put it on your big screen, do you want to talk us through uh, the mini, JD? Sure. Want. So uh, I had mentioned that um, I had done most of this airbrushing in here on the wings, the base, and then all of the flesh. Um, but you can only get, you know, at least with my level of uh, expertise with an airbrush, you can only get so much highlighting. Um, mm -hmm. So what I've been doing here is going through with this uh, Too Thin Coats Sanguine Scarlet. It's on one of these screens, this stuff. Um, yep. uh, it's one of the colors that I used when I did the airbrushing. I added a little bit of that to my paint mix. And so I've been going through and doing um, basically striations following the muscle striations, uh, like in his neck and in the muscles of his back upper wings mm -hmm. um, so yeah and I'm actually at the stage where I need to uh, lighten this up a little bit um, and before anybody seeks to warn me no I will not be using white to lighten up my red because I don't want them to look pink <laughs> actually I'm going to try a little experiment here and mix in some fluorescent red and if it doesn't work hey I'll paint over it that's the beauty of doing this sort of thing. So, uh, picking up on uh, what, we, what we talked about in Wave 2 for Frameworks. Um, oh, just keep and, drilling and me about that Wave 2 stuff, we, Dave. We are. Well, <laughs> I've, I, and then, uh, you know, what I do is try and slip in some Wave 3, but, uh, you know, we're Wave 2 anyway. Oh, I see how you are. Okay. <laughs> um, Pathfinder. So, Pathfinder was a really nice surprise to, to, see, to see there. And you mentioned there's there's more coming for Pathfinder as well. Is that is that the whole uh, iconic hero range for Pathfinder? Um, no, actually, uh, I, I wanted to do a few um, just to kind of uh, get prepped for that. Um, well, okay. what am I saying? To get uh, to get a taste for uh, sprue miniatures for framework or for um, for Pathfinder. Sorry, yeah. I'm talking kind of backwards here. Um, so those are originally planned for wave one and then for oh, one okay. reason or another we had to push them back out to wave two um so uh yeah we've kind of exhausted our plan to introduce uh iconics um right. uh, there will be uh, 
assuming everything goes well, there will be a uh, a Hell Knight in a future uh, wave. Yeah. Um, and that will be one of those figures that, like I said earlier, because it's a character figure, it will have two different torsos nice. with yeah. enough heads and arms to build two different figures. Um, after that, I think I have like one more iconic character planned. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else from that point is just going to kind of be, hey, I think people would like this. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Cool. Nice to know. Uh, 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 is the packaging different? Is the Pathfinder... Because Frameworks yes. was all... It was yeah. Frameworks, it was universal. Um, different sets had different colours. But it, it's going to be branded, Peso and everything else. And Exactly. Pathfinder. Cool. Exactly. Right. So I'm going to. You can see where I'm. Uh, yeah. I've mixed some fluorescent red uh, with my sanguine scarlet, and I'm doing even more highlighting up here on the shoulder. And I'm going to try to focus not just on the upper areas, but areas that are lit by this light source, the uh, sword flame. Yeah. And then the whip flame and the base flame down here at the bottom. So there will be kind of like light coming from the upper right and then light coming mm -hmm. from beneath and, and the lower part. Cantina 13, how you doing? Yeah, nice to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Hanging out. Good, good. Uh, Ancient Fire Dragon says, where can you get those glasses? I got these from Amazon. Ooh, there you go. Steve has the full Robocop outfit <laughs> as well. Which, uh, he's not wearing today. He hasn't gone Robocop today. I wondered. I, I felt kind of silly being the only one wearing mine. <laughs> no. Excuse me. I, I can still <laughs> see some things. Um, so these size minis, I'm, I'm okay with. Ah, right. Although, probably when I get on to doing what you're doing, which is picking out highlights on the muscles, uh, then I would put it on. But for the wings, I'm okay. Birds, birds suck. <laughs> says, says okay. have a great stream. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Ancient Fire Dragon says, thank you. I'm just pushing some buttons now. I've gone power hungry. Um, <laughs> right, we are. At half past mark, we have one half an hour left. So half an hour left. I don't know why I said one half an hour left. <laughs> just half an hour left. Let's see just how far into that my GoPro camera battery will last. So is there anything, um, talk about WizKids as a whole in general, is there anything um, new coming out in terms of IP licenses for 2023? Um, that would be a good reason to go to UK Games Expo to find out oh. everything that's coming. <laughs> Great plug, love it. Uh, 
we'll just drop in some color in here. I think that fluorescent red uh, mix actually does a pretty good job here. It seems to be really bringing out the detail there on that shoulder, on his face. You're welcome, Ancient Fire Dragon. And, and good luck. I mean, the, this model that I got, um, this is just like Amazon Basics, and it has it comes with five different magnifications. You can swap out these, the lenses, whenever you like. Um, it also has a, a light, but I haven't kept my battery charged because I have, hey, this amazing light setup. Yep. Yeah. Well, this kids be at Origins Game Fair in Columbus or Gen Con. Um, I believe both, but certainly Gen Con. Are you heading to Gen Con? I do not believe so. If I am, they haven't told me yet. <laughs> can't, you, can't you can't you like volunteer and say, look, I'll carry some boxes <laughs> if if I can go. Do you want to go? Is 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 the question. Do you? And, and when you go to conventions, do you like hanging out? Do you play games? Um, you... It depends. Uh, usually when I'm working at a convention, uh, by the time it, the day is over, I'm usually kind of wiped out. <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, you know, I don't know how obvious it is, but I am something of an introvert, and so talking to people all day long leaves me kind of exhausted. So you, I, I, I completely agree. Uh, the whole networking thing and doing conventions... Um, is is a lot of fun but it it's surprisingly draining now something that we have coming up is that uh for this this uk games expo this year uh luke gygax is coming over oh nice um so we're gonna i'm gonna have a chance to have a chat with him and meet him in person which would be which would be great but so the second day, the first day of the show, but the second day for us, because we're going for the, the press event, which is a whole day before. Um, that means I'm going to be up all day Thursday until late night. Friday, the show actually opens. So we've got the general public to deal with, as well as everything else and all the events and all the interviews going on. Then at eight o'clock PM until midnight. So for four hours, I'm going to be playing D and D with Luke Gygax. <laughs> so kind of the way it goes with that sort of thing. It's always you know, yeah. hey, after everything else shuts down, we're gonna play until four in the morning. Let's go. Well, he's actually run a competition. So, um, in in collaboration with UK Games Expo, he's gonna run four games, four gaming sessions. Uh, I believe there's eight people per table. Um, and I won a seat. Nice. So poor Steve would be outside holding the suitcases in the pouring rain for four hours. <laughs> and, and I'll be in there uh, rolling dice and we're playing it's not it's not official D D. It's it's Luke Guy Gax has his own publishing company, which is Gax Works. It's his uh, it's his adventure. Um, but yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. It's only a few weeks away. But I think that's gonna be that's gonna be epic. I'm really looking forward to Again, just just chatting and hanging out and doing bits and pieces. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. That sounds awesome. And, and you know, good luck keeping your energy up throughout the day, so that you know you're not playing oh, through yeah. half lidded eyes. I'm I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm going to be a it's zombie. Be quiet. <laughs> be yeah. quiet. Yeah. Well, afterwards, until, until the end, it'll collapse. <laughs> yeah, I played D and D with Luke Gygax. Um. Sorry, Luke, if you're watching, <laughs> if you've watched this on YouTube, don't worry about it. I'm just going to just be a little bit of a fanboy. That's OK. Um, so um, I, I, I have to ask, are you bringing out the Scouse tool? Well, yeah, <laughs> because you kind of have to make an impression, don't you? 
Surely, exactly, surely most of the people there are all going to be uh, English from, from England somewhere. Um, Luke might be the only American on the table. <laughs> and one of my characters is a, uh, a tur turtle druid. A turtle druid, and he's, he talks like this, you know. And one of the things, apparently, that uh, he talks really fast, and and he's got a bit of an accent, and he talks like this. And my my the, the accent comes and goes. Sometimes he might be Welsh, sometimes he sounds uh, Australian, and sometimes he sounds Irish. But uh, it, it comes and goes. But he's going to be like this, and then he's going to cast some spells. But he doesn't really mean to cast some spells because he's a really nice guy. And if you get to know him, he's really really nice. So uh, I might break him out of the table, and he just he just won't shut up. He just keeps talking and talking, and then. Uh, he runs those he runs those charisma checks, you know. Uh, fighting is always the last option, but he loves to do uh, different bits and pieces and show off his skills. But when he does actually get to kill something, he goes really mean. <laughs> so, he's he's one turtle you don't want to mess with, and he loves doing the whole ninja turtle thing, you know. He, he like uh, if you come after him with a sword, he will put his head in his shell uh, just to do it. As, he does it as a dexterity check. So, uh, yeah. And I'm just going to see if Luke actually understands a word of what I'm saying. Um, as I insult everybody else around the table. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With my bad accents. <laughs> but it's better than sounding like I do sound as a Londoner. But um, not much I can do about that. So there we go. And his name's Paul. Paul, don't you know? Because <laughs> I really get to play. Um, always a DM. But when I do play, I like to have some fun with it. I also like to kill stuff. I am a big fan of I got I, every character I have. Uh, just because I like my characters, I like to talk and everything else I still like to kill stuff so I have a I every character I have a kill list my monsters kill list and that is always a lot of fun I think I, I think I stunned all the audience there because no one no one's talking now. Look. <laughs> no, we're we're all googling. Um, yeah, we're looking at uh, you know slang finder and. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did he just say? <laughs> did he what just? That? Did he call me a? <laughs> yeah, what language was that? <laughs> what did he call me? I find that I can do imitations of accents, um, but to an actual, you know, native speaker, it's just awful. <laughs> yes, it, it always sounds, definitely always sounds better in your head yeah. than what actually comes out. <laughs> I, uh, I have a Pathfinder character, uh, a Dwarf Barbarian. Um, who I just I have him sound like John Reese Davies as Ghibli. Oh wow! Yeah, because I can sort of pull that off. Um, but uh, yeah, if uh, if I had to come up with a, a, a new dwarf, hey, guess what? He would sound like John Reese Davies as Ghibli. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, so much for the GoPro again. Oh, where's he going again? Sigh. That'll teach me to leave the thing plugged in and assuming it's charging. Ancient Fire Dragon, I take it that means you're uh, in San Diego? Still live down there, actually. That's where my wife is from. <laughs> Brave little GoPro. The little GoPro that could. Central California Mountains, okay. Dave, you gotta shake your paint. Steve and I are both shaking our paint. Shake your paint, Dave. I've got, I've got a spinny on, thing to do. Just pick one up. I don't need this. No, I don't. Oh. I go boom. There we go. Zoom. <laughs> Zoom. There you go. I don't. Don't need to shake my paint. <laughs> you were cool. We got the tools. We got the talent. <laughs> I mean, I've got the little tool over here too, but it's noisy. Okay, so I'm actually getting a little bit uh, impressed. Um, would you like <laughs> to see the work so far? Yeah, let's see this. Ooh, oh, here we go. Uh, which camera? Which camera? And hello. And there we go. Boom. Here you go, Steve. Sure. Very nice. Yeah, it looks great. So yeah. Very nice. It's my phone. So what I did, I took this off. Um, and you had the little pool at the bottom. I just mm -hmm. went over that with white, um, and then I glued the base back on. Uh, so this is ink. It's just two colours. You've got uh, yellow and what have I got? Uh, yellow and red. Um, here, game ink. I don't think I uh, I mixed mine. Well, what what I did, I I, I started with yellow at the base. Yeah. Then um, after talking to to you, Steve, and I went went to the top. Um, then I did orange from the top yeah. down to like yeah. that kind of mid section here. You can see that it's still a little bit wet. You can see there. And yeah. then let that dry for a little bit. And then I did the second coat just from the top down to here. Yeah. So it gives me that three, I, I, I can see it. It doesn't really come up on camera, but you're definitely a, a yellow an orange and a red. It looks good. It looks it really good. good. Yeah. So that's come out and it's, Look at that, I mean, it's all the way around. It looks really, really nice, actually. I'm impressed with that. So that, that was looking good. Um, so then I tried the sword. The sword is still drying. Hasn't got the effect I wanted just yet, but I'm gonna do some layers, layering on that. The smoke has come out very nice. What did you use for the smoke? So the smoke I've actually just used, um, I've used I didn't have a dark ink. I didn't have like a black ink. Right. So I used Gravelord Grey speed paint, which it kind of watered down 
in my head, they're watered down anyway. Um, and that's kind of made it all smoky, which I quite like. I tested it first. Yeah. So that's actually made it quite nice and smoky. Remember, these are clear plastic. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't know why is... I put you on that camera. Yeah. Um, so that you should have you should have that in your set. Uh... I should have, but it depends on where that set is. <laughs> so um, I, I've only got. Can't focus, bloody camera. Oh, my tools are now. Smoky um, ink is what it's called. Smoky ink, right. Oh, that's colour though. Yeah, no, that's it's oh, not an it? ink. That's me being stupid. There you go. Ignore me. I shall. <laughs> and then the sword, <laughs> I've done the same as a flame. So I've started yellow and then I want to I want to blend in that a little, a little bit more. So the idea is that the blade itself, the edge of that blade is, is kind of yellow hot or maybe white hot. Cool. And then it's... Um, no hot stick. <laughs> 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 uh, and then the rest is red. So here they go. And then the, the the whip I'm really pleased with, the fire uh, the fire whip. Um, so I did the same thing, the whole thing in yellow ink. Yeah. Uh, the front and the back because it's a reverse. Then I started uh, at this end with the orange. But as the brush was running out, I just kind of dabbed it on the tops. And that seems yep. to have blended in really, really well. The Again, it doesn't pick up. It never gives you like really good view on, on camera. But you can see there, the yellow is really blending in really well. Uh, the orange and the yellow. That, that get, especially I'll, on that corner, looks awesome. Yes. Really, really pleased with that. So I'll get some photos uh, done of that. Because I'm really pleased with that. I still haven't got done. Still haven't got done to to these bits. These are mostly um, so his uh, his kilt, his vanity rags that he's got around his waist. Um, I'm just going to do that black. Horns are going to do black. All of these metal pieces, the chains and stuff, I'm going to do that in a gun metal, so it's nice and dark. Mm, yeah. Um, and probably the same with the handle. I might do something here. With the gem, I yeah. might make that shiny, a little bit of gloss varnish on that. Might, might make it, I don't know, I might do a different colour. Uh, maybe a gold or something to really make it shine. But yeah, I, I really like that bit. I think I've got more paint on my hands than, than normal. <laughs> as well. And there's a, on his shoulder pad, you can't really see it, but there is a skull embedded in these, these uh, like, um, jagged metal bits and chains and stuff there's a there's a human skull in here so i'm going to do that bone color there's one on his waist um i haven't done the little change you get you do get bits so um we mentioned right at the start there's these extra bits there's a skull on a chain but i might add those in i might not i won't see and there's there are various options for horns but uh, I think we'll come back. Come back yeah, to I, I was going to put the the skull and the chain on afterwards because that's exactly the sort of place that I'd ping it off by accident as I'm painting because it goes yeah. on his on his waist, doesn't it? What? That it never does. happens to me five times. So <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh, so who's been talking about what? Uh, ancient fire dragon, central California mountains, originally New Jersey. Big tough poop. Uh, suppose, <laughs> suppose, <laughs> sounds like some other kind of tool to me. Uh, cool Joyce, we you playing with power tools, painting, looking great, Dave. I am looking great. I had my hair cut at the weekend, <laughs> and I had a shave. I had a shave in ages. Um, artist hands. <laughs> I just saw that one. So uh, there he goes. So he, he said, oh, artist hands. And then he said, I'm very tired. Can't take, can't type to save his life. There you go. Um, I think you threw him off with uh, mispronouncing his screen name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> K 
zero. The skulls are so <laughs> fun to be on. Steady hands, and I use super glue. So I'm holding it. I'm only holding it for a few seconds before it takes off some skin. But uh, that's that is my go-to choice for the. Uh, yeah, when, it, when your markets. fingers start getting hot, it's already too late. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Indeed. Somewhere on my uh, on my Facebook page, I have a photograph of my fingers being the only thing holding up a bottle of glue, just uh, sort of you know like that with the glue uh, hanging down. Uh. <laughs> so we are going to be wrapping up in about ten minutes, folks. If you have any more questions uh, about frameworks, about whiz kids, about painting. Um, ask him why you can. He's going to be gone in 10 minutes, so do ask away. Uh, but in the meantime, maybe he can regale us with some... Uh, what we're going to see in Frameworks Wave 3. <laughs> well, you're not curious about Wave 2 first? Well, I know I know Pathfinder. I saw Pathfinder stuff in there, and I was like, wow, that's, that's great. Is there more stuff to be announced for Wave 2? Uh, not to be announced for Wave 2, but you did kind of miss one of the uh, the major revelations. You got really focused on Pathfinder, and you totally uh, missed that Critical Role is going to be in Sprue. Oh, Starting I didn't know with that. Wave 2. Oh. What, what form Critical Role is in it? Is it characters, or is it monsters? Uh, initially, it's just going to be monsters. Yeah. Um, we have a... Uh, we have one that we had planned for Wave 3. Um... It had some clear plastic bits again, so more you know difficulties there. Um, so it's probably going to get pushed back to wave four, and hopefully we get it out because the sculpt is finished. It looks fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, I really want that one to come out. Um, but yeah, we have uh, we have critical role stuff that's going to be coming to the uh, uh, to the roster. Very nice. I've not actually picked up any of the critical role stuff. Um, I got the book. The, what was the book called? Um, Tadore Revisited? Yeah, I got that one. And then I got the adventure as well, called of Neverdeep. Okay. Um, and that was really good. That's a, that's a lot of fun. Uh, one day we'll we'll get around to playing that as well. The um, uh, yeah, some of the, <laughs> some of their monsters are, are pretty good. Some of some of them are not. <laughs> we saw. I was watching episode. I don't know. Campaign three, fifty two or fifty three, and there was this. It's a big. It looked like it was made out of vegetables. It was this big kind of. Um, sp it. it uh, what's that, Steve? What's that spider? It's a Pathfinder one. Spider with all the brains all over it. Brain, uh, brain collector. Yeah. It looked like that, but like lobsterfied, like stretch it and lobsterfied. Right, right. Um, it looked really, really, really strange. Uh, and it was big, it was huge. But I, I, I always like classic monsters. I think it's because when I've grown up reading books like um, Crystal Shard Trilogy and uh, Dragon's Vault and Twilight, uh, Dragon Lance trilogy and stuff like that. The mon those classic monsters. That that's what I remember. Uh, and anyone who knows, I'm a big fan of Dritz anyway. So <laughs> I got, got all the got all the Dritz. What really? What? Yeah. Don't you pick Nobody on even knows who that character is. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Kenny. <laughs> is there is there anything else planned? So we've got uh, okay. So we've got D and D. We've got Pathfinder. We've got Critical Role. Anything else? Is there is there like an original WizKids monster in there? Um, 
Original monsters are a little tricky to do. That's what you usually see, especially with the unpainted miniature line, the Nolzers, and you know, we have the WizKids deep cuts. Yeah. Those tend to be the things that aren't like unique to an IP. Yeah. Um, you know, so you won't see like a WizKids gelatinous cube, for example. Um, but you know, we can do stuff like you know, uh, nobility, the the courts. Uh, you know, yeah. we've done that kind of thing for Vikings. Um, we did the the Celts set uh, last year, year four. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. anyway, yeah. So we do have some stuff planned for that for Sprue. Um, so you know, those of you who like that as uh, townspeople, um, I won't say that they're just you know generic NPCs because you know a lot of people don't like even bothering to paint those, let alone assemble those first. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, we do have some uh, some guardsmen uh, in the works. I I, um, I picked up and and uh, again thank you to to Wizkids. You sent me a bunch of stuff for uh, Dragonlance, and it was the armies. So you had um, the Calaman soldiers, the Dragon Army soldiers, and uh, the Draconians. They, those are phenomenal. Those are brilliant, and each one is a different sculpt. It was the same format as uh, where we've done the um, the goblins, the bugbears, the orcs. Each sculpt is different. It's pre-painted. Those are lovely. Those are really, really great value for money. Um, each one is unique. I mean, the orc one. I've, I've used it several times. There's an orc in that pack that is all kind of like bulbous and zombified. He's got this plague orc thing going on. That sculpt is amazing. I use it all the time. Whenever there's a zombie, the orc guy comes out. He's he is just uh, horrific. So yeah, thank you uh, for sending those over. I don't think it was specifically me, but I will pass that along. <laughs> yeah. I, I say you as Wizkids. What we should do is get everyone from Wizkids who wants to paint, and get them all on. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have, a, we'll have a paint party. We have done that from time to time. Have you? Oh, oh what? As a, as a, like a work thing? Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. One of our um, one of our office workers uh, on the East Coast puts it together, and uh, yeah, we all just get together and hang out and paint. That's nice. I like that. Paint and chat. We are two minutes. Two minutes. So the one drawback of wearing glasses like these when I'm on uh, you know, stream like this is you can't see when I waggle my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> but Dragonboard, uh, Dragonborn Industries, um, yeah, I, I, I did kind of misunderstand you earlier. Uh, you do want more uh, uh, townsfolk types. Um, cool. Um, it's tricky doing things other than humans. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we don't want it to be too much like Pathfinder or Wizards, you know, iconic dwarves and elves and so forth. So it's a very fine line. Um, uh, we had to be very careful with the, um, the ship's crew that we put mm -hmm. out. Some of those are non-human. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, wherever possible, I will I will do that um, in either the unpainted miniatures line or the the uh, uh, the sprue line. I imagine like that set. So I don't think I'm going to finish this uh, bellow in the next uh, you know, two minutes, minute and a half. <laughs> no, I think I'm. I think there I've done. I'm happy with what I've achieved. Actually, it again, the scope is phenomenal. The de uh, the detail on this. I mean, even 
I don't know if you can yet see that, but the leather wings. This te mm -hmm. this, it's not just that's texture. That's that is amazing. I'm I always going to my eyebrows again. I couldn't see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know it, it's got an eight pack, but you know, the the wings are are just phenomenal. That detail, and I love the fact that the um, the wings have holes in as well. Yes. All that right. was it. That was another thing. Again, the uh, level of detail. I am ninety nine percent certain that was entirely a Tom Babby uh, thing with his concept art for this. Tom gives so much character to these things, and then the sculptors, you know, they they make that vision a reality. Yeah. Well, uh, what I will do is I will continue to uh, to t I will continue to paint this over the weekend. I will be putting photos up on the Instagram page, um, which you can find over here. Uh, so Instagram.com slash Band of Badgers. You'll see all of our stuff there, not just mini painting, but some of our stuff behind our table games, which not many get people to get to see anymore because we, we haven't been filming our table games. We have a Dragonlance table game coming, as well as the online Dragonlance game that we're doing. Um, and we're currently doing Icewind Dale, so we, you might be able to see, at least you'll see little videos and you'll see um, loads of photos because everyone puts their photos up there. So do go and check that out. And of course, uh, go like and subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash band of badges. Everyone, uh, every little like and, and help uh, is um, much needed. And we thank you very much for it. So do go do that. If you're watching this on YouTube, just go do it now. Just do it now. <laughs> um, but if you're watching on Twitch, you can subscribe there as well, apparently. So go and check that out. And as always, something I didn't mention at the start, but I will mention it now. Thank you to all of our sponsors, um, uh, supporters of the event. We've got uh, WizKids. Again, JD, thank you for being here. You can see them all down in the bottom uh, bottom right-hand corner here. We've got WizKids, we've got Army Painter, Vallejo Paints, and Dogmite. Dogmite. Um, if you saw the trade at the start, they're doing this fantastic uh, fund crowd pleaser. Crowd pleaser? Crowd, crowd, crowd fund pleaser. Crowd crowd that's, crowd a, that's an only Well, you know, the goal is for it to be a crowd pleaser, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, the two, the two mics will be there. Um, so then they've got a whole new GM screen package going on. Uh, do go and check it out. They are, I'll tell you, first hand I've seen one, I've got one. Uh, absolutely fantastic. All the WizKid stuff you can find. All of the framework stuff. Can't find Wave 2 yet. Not until June, apparently. Um, <laughs> you can find it at shop.wizkids.com. Vallejo, you can find it at aquiliusvallejo.com. Army Painter is armypainter.com. And Dogmite is dogmite.com. There you go. I'm going to shut up now. And that's, a, that's enough of that. I'm just going to put in the, uh, the Dogmite backer kit link. Um, oh, there you go. That was in chat. Well done, Steve. Through the magic of it being in chat, we can we can put that up on the screen. Through the magic of being live, he has done it. Well done, Steve. So go ahead, let's go around the table. Um, I'll make everybody big again. JD, how far do, are you pleased with with your progress so far? It looks more like Hellboy now. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I've added uh, quite a bit of fluorescent orange and red up here um, and that's yeah. going to be reflective of all of this uh, on his, his flaming sword. I'm doing the same thing down here at the bottom. Uh -oh. oh no, it's uh -oh. just gone. Just, <laughs> just lost it. Just lost it. There it is. Hang on. Let me let me, let me enlarge my screen over here again. Uh, yeah, I promise if I do this next time I will, <laughs> I will charge that camera. I will make sure I get up at 6 in the morning and, and you know, immediately pop it on the charger. Um you can see this at all. Yeah. So yeah, I've added the uh, the the lighter yeah. highlighting here on the upper yeah. arm. Uh, sorry, this upper arm, so it reflects all of this. And I'm doing the same thing down here, so it reflects all this flame. Yeah, it's come out Next really good on the leg. And just to point out, something you you don't kind of uh, realize is is how big this is. Look, so you saw it up against JD's face. This is big. Look, it's a big. It's a large mini. This is, yeah, see, look, boom, boom. 
I was, I was doing it for for JD Steve. That was all. Oh, well, this can be my photo for uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe, there you go. Well, hi. Marketing and stuff, you know. Put it on the business card. This is me. Um, and we walk around with it on your on your head at UK Games Expo, Steve. No, I'll be Ooh, incognito. There you, go. there you go. I will. I will hide. Um, Steve, how far did you get? Uh, I, I managed to paint one whole wing. One whole wing for two hours, one Steve. Two hours, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's put that in focus. That does look pretty good, though. There you go. So. It's got some wash on the moment, which is still wet. And I used, I, I went for the flesh wash, and I wish I'd just gone for the normal one, which is the brown. So uh, I'll probably end up doing it again. But uh, then I've got the same as you're doing with the the, the body. I've got to go and highlight all of the uh, muscle tone and, and and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I didn't get far. It was it ended up being a bit of a discovery <laughs> exercise in 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 painting it as well but um i'm i'm generally pleased with the outcome i like the fact that uh, the coloring it makes it even more demonic there's something i mean i i went with the brown because i was using uh what denny of imagination did and i really yeah. like the the black uh, the brown leathery wings versus a red skin tone mm -hmm. but that that makes it it's probably a little bit more horrifying yeah, I wanted to go for the stretch skin look, like oh, um, yeah. like Hellraiser. What are they called? What what are the demons in Hellraiser called? I can't remember. Uh, Xenobites. Xenobites. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. So yeah, I, I did that, and then and then just to, just to, just to say I did more than one thing. I dry brushed the uh, the sword <laughs> in the last two minutes. So it's well, that's come out. I like that. It's looking good. So yeah, I'll, that's uh, really nice. I love the fact that it's just a purple sword. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got all the inks out that day and just decided to just play with it. That's nice. And, and I, green, I didn't want to just. I didn't want to do it all as flame because I felt like it was just too much red then. But um, yeah. that's why I went for that one with the electricity. <laughs> And this one, so I haven't done anything since the last time. This is, I'm just letting it dry. You can see the ink whip, the fire whip, that's coming out really, really nice. So what I did in the past two hours is skin tone. You can see he's got some definition there, showing off his muscles. Uh, I did the flames, stuck the, the whip on, stuck the sword on. Started the sword, not finished it. We've got the, we've got the smoke coming out of there. Um, so he's done it all over and then the base, which is over here. There we go. So paint up the base, paint up the fire. I'm really, really happy with the fire on this one. I think that's such a lovely, just a, such a lovely sculpt. Yeah, it, um, it really is. And that, so basically in in here, you, you, there's no way the camera's gonna pick it up, but there's a foothold there. And there's a foothold in there. And on the back of, I'll use his wings, that's right. On the back of the feet, you can see, uh, there you go. There are these these two bits, and those two bits will fit in those holes, and he'll be kind of in there somehow. I've got I've got I've got to move this around. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but yeah, he's going to be floating in that, floating above, just in this above the base. That is going to look so incredible. I'm really looking yeah, forward to, a, to seeing how it's that a really together. dynamic pose. That, yeah. uh, it's in. Yeah, so I'm gonna have a play with that. If you glued that, if you glued the arm on. I uh, the uh, his whip arm, yes. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have a play and move things around as required. This is quite bendy. There's a lot of flexibility in this. Uh -huh. So you can you can move it around and get in there. But yeah, I'm gonna get get those feet in and then start moving things around. But that might have to move a little bit. We'll see. Yeah, you might need to rotate his arm a little bit. The yeah. flame whip is supposed to go across the front of his body. Ah, okay. Well, the, in front of that uh, right leg. Yeah. It'll move. It'll move. There we go. I can rotate. You know, it, it can do it however you like. I'm just thinking, you know, yeah. it may interfere with the uh, you know, 
it's the flames at the back, so you've got to put it in. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, looking good. I like you, like it. And I, and I managed to get that blend in as well. So on the arm. Oh, um, that's good. Oh, yeah. And the arm into the sort of the, the brown, the red into yeah, the brown. That's looking good. That's come out nice. Quite impressed with that, actually. That, that looks really good. Why that's come out. There you go. Seeing as that was dry as well. Yes. Yeah. So all I did was paint up a little bit, um, did the red, uh, and went over, and then a second coat. And that's come out really, really well. But yeah, he's uh, need to get some the rest of him painted and get some teeth on there. Yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of teeth. We've got some fangs on there. But yeah, there we go. That's it, folks. Thank you very much for joining us. For those of you who uh, who sat and painted with us, thank you very much. Stick your photos up on your Instagram. Um, link us so we know that you know that we can see what you're working on, and uh, you can say that you did it while you're watching the Great British Brush Off. And hopefully, we'll get JD back again sometime soon. Maybe with Wave Two, uh, but we'll have to uh, we we'll have to wait and see. I've still got the beholder to make. I was talking to Steve about this earlier. I still need to do the beholder. Uh, I've got all of my assembled wave one over there on the wall, and I'm slowly working my way through them. There's, there's a what about what the I haven't done the drider, and it's the beholder, but 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 the beholder is my next one I want to do. Um, I've got a few bits from that, but yeah, I want to want to see. Steve's gone searching because I said beholder. <laughs> <laughs> all covered of doom. He's gone. He's gone looking. Yeah. So look for a beholder. A beholder. What's I'm looking for? Yeah, it's my beholder. Come on, let me just show it on the big screen. There we Boom. go. Oh, that's looking great. Yeah, I, I'm done the uh, painted the eyes on, but everything else is pretty much done. Oh, and then the bone plates. I've done them. So I, I tried to do object source light in because he was shooting flame out. So that's why I see yeah. it. And then black back. Yeah, that's that's my favourite one, <laughs> that one. Which is why I want to put it in a in a in a diorama. And I was explaining to Dave, um, so we got dungeons and lasers stuff, so I want to paint up part of the wall and, and have another miniature in a pose jumping down on it or something like that. But that 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 is that is my favourite miniature. Uh, apart from my favourite character miniature is is the, the monk that painted the three arms. Yeah. And I've, I've used that in a game. I, I absolutely love that one. <laughs> cool. Well, we uh, we have uh, run way over. Um, but that's it. Thank you very much for joining us. And we will see you again soon. Remember to like and subscribe on YouTube. And that's it. That's it. Bye. We're done. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Bye. And thank you for joining us, JD. Thank you for having me. You're welcome anytime. Just, yep. <laughs> Just come on and hang out. <laughs> oh, well, I've got the I've got the key now. I've got the, the invite. I'll just <laughs> show up in the little screen. <laughs> just turn up <laughs> and then spend uh, the right. whole time playing with my camera. I'm like, oh, we've got to do this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later, everybody. Bye. Good night.